Well, hello, Scott. That was like oh. the, the most awkward start we've had yet, but it, we pulled it off. Huh? What is that? Dude, it's, my, uh, it's my smoking hat. <laughs> I, did not, I did not get the memo. Oh, you didn't? <laughs> <laughs> that was a rough opening. That was a rough opening. You know, we're working on our technical abilities here, right? We have some help. Some people have reached out. We're going to get better. But listen, I didn't know it was cap night. It's, well, you said you're going to wear your hood. Well, it's hood and swivel for me. It's the hoodie. But uh, listen, we're live, okay? So Mike Zano, Scott Bossman, uh, the Land Geek guys, uh, we're here to talk about all things land, all things geeky land, right? We're here to – we got some fun things lined up tonight, right, Scott? Yeah, we got a special guest again, which is always fun for the community because they get to hear what other folks are experiencing. That was That's always my favorite part. Don't you love those those old student podcasts? Like, I, I, sorry, the hat, the, the hat, Scott. I love it. <laughs> Here, I'll take it up. I want to put so they know who's who. I'm going to put our names up. Scott Boss and Mike Zeno. All right, here we go. Uh, let's so get anyway, to back to back to what I was saying before you started <laughs> laughing at me again with you, Robo Swivel, baby, Robo Swivel. We'll get some uh, comments. I, Look at all these people. That's awesome. Welcome, everybody. Go geek. I yeah. like that. There's Peterson. Eric, who's your favorite land guy? Is it Mike? Oh, thanks, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> look at I look like Rocky Balboa. You know, he's a childhood fan of mine. I was telling my daughter this morning I should drink the raw eggs. I don't know if it was good for me, but Rocky did it, and I wanted to do it. So there you go. Can you say right, the word? Scott. Can you can you say the word R A W one more time for us? Raw? What's raw? Raw, raw eggs. R raw. raw. You just said roar. <laughs> all right, Scott. All things land geek. You go ahead. Take it away. I interrupted you too many times. You really did. I mean, no, I was just saying, like, you remember Mark's old podcast, the best passive income model podcast? Yes. Those those student stories on there were my favorite ones, right? You go on, right. and I listen to you a couple times. I listen to, listen to Jeff Axton. I listen to Scott Todd. I listen to Chris, you know, Chris Clark. And I don't know. It was awesome. You well, learn a lot. Learn, learn a lot in those, and I think uh, having these guests on on Nightcap is kind of taking the place of that, or not taking the place, but it's building on that a little bit, which is kind of cool. Yeah, well, um, you know, storytelling is how I think you know the inspiration is kind of created when you hear people talk about their real life experiences, uh, what they've done, how they've overcome obstacles and gotten to where they are. That's empowering. And that, you know what? That's what's great about boot camp, too. I, I know we brought it up last week. We brought it up this week because it's like, what, how many days away? It's uh, like a week and a half, two weeks. Yeah. So, um, you know, when you meet people and you hear their individual stories, it is truly empowering. It shows you, you know, all the possibilities, you know. And these are average people just like you and I and, and uh, you and me, or whatever the correct grammatic way to say that is. But, uh, you know, these are average people that are you're taking the business to a high level every day. So you're right. Storytelling is awesome. It really is. It really is. So I'm, I'm excited to have our guest on. Uh, she's got some good questions for us. She's got her own uh, tip of the week, if you will, that she's excited to share with us. So Awesome. Awesome. Fun. Yeah. So let's see if we get any questions for the audience. We you know we don't want to rush into our surprise. We always like to have a little anticipation, you know, prior right, to the right. arrival of the guest. Um, what do you, What do you think? You got anything uh, you'd like to add? Any words of wisdom to start today's uh, start today's show? Any words of wisdom? I just I don't know. I'm excited for boot camp. Actually, right before our broadcast, I looked over here to to my right, and what did I see on the wall? What did you see? My first ever boot camp name tag, right? Wow. Yes. Hanging very here nice. in the office for inspiration. <laughs> How much I, have my, I have my first dollar bill somewhere framed in the other room. I'll bring that on here. The first, you know, when I got my first land deal, I cashed it in. I took one of the first dollars and I was like, going to frame that, that first dollar bill. I think it's good to have little, uh, you know, something that you can like look at and say, okay, that's where I started. This is where I am now. Uh, so I absolutely. 
Oh, Absolutely. for sure. We, we actually have a cool story from our first boot camp. Uh, one of the nights, Aaron and I went out for Chinese uh, after a long day of classes. And her fortune that night said, you will be coming into a fortune soon. Isn't that awesome? Really? Yeah. I thought maybe it said you'll be meeting a new best friend soon. And then <laughs> you and I met. For sure, yes. I don't oh. know what's up with this internet connection. I'm always on delay. But we, we, have, a, we have a question. That's Jim. Hey, Jim. Welcome again. Codename KJ, but it's Jim. Is that what you're telling me? Yep. Jim and Catherine. Okay. So there you go. This is the question. Do you guys still do mailings every day? All right, Scott, you're first. Okay. So uh, I would say I do, at this point in time, I'm doing kind of more mass mailings. I might do once a week. I might do once every couple of weeks. Um, January, I sent out 1,000 at once. So uh, I know, Mike, you're, you're mass mailing quite a bit. I think when you're first getting into this, it's very helpful to mail every day because right. you want a steady stream of due diligence coming in for four weeks from now, right? You don't want to send out 100 mailers or 500 mailers on one day and then four weeks from now be hit with maybe you know, 12 to 15 offers in the mailbox that you'll have to do due diligence on. It might be a little bit overwhelming. So I recommend for people who are just getting into it to, you know, do do like uh, Scott Todd tells you in flight school and do 20 a day, 20 a day, 20 a day, and try not to miss. Yeah, there's some real wisdom there. And I think one of the reasons, well, I know one of the reasons Scott talks about that in the beginning, that uh, 20 a day is you are keeping it manageable. Listen, you build this business in a micro environment. Right. You build it in the micro. I always say that you can explode into the macro. Right. But you got to build your processes. Anybody can send out thousands of offer letters. Right. I mean, especially with the LG pass and connecting the lob. I mean, it's a, it's a snap. However, you're going to create some new things. Right. You're going to create. I like to say my my Batman quote. You know, there's a storm coming, Mr. Wayne. You send a lot of mailings out. There's going to be a lot of deal flow coming. And if you're not ready to deal with that, you're going to create a mental headache, a real problem. So when you do 20 a day, 100 a week, you're building your systems. And as you go through, you're going to develop this whole process. And then eventually you're going to say, okay, I'm going to ramp it up. I'm going to send 500 out. I'm going to send 1,000 out. And very quickly you'll identify your inefficiencies, right? You'll look and you'll see, here's a clog in my pipeline, right? I got 10, 20 people that want me to – uh, purchase their properties, but I'm trying to run around, get all the information, talk to them. Um, it can become overwhelming. So, you know, until you have like an intake manager or somebody that can actually, you know, vet all these deals. So it, in the beginning, it can be very difficult if you mail too much. So the reason why you start out is, you you know, 20 a day, 100 a week, you're looking at three or four deals a month. That's manageable on a micro level, but it's not going to move the needle for you in the long run, right? You need to really ramp it up, but you got to be ready for that ramp up. So, yeah, we right. don't mail now every day. I mail in bulk, like thousands, and um, my team can handle it. Right? We can do the – I mean, I don't have to do it. I mean, I miss talking to people. I'll tell you, that's one of my – as you can see how much I'm talking right now. <laughs> you just talk I to love, me instead. I, I love talking, oh. right? But the reality is when people – right, Scott? You know, you can vouch for this, right? People will sell you their land at 25 cents on the dollar, but many, many people, before they sell you that land, they want you to hear this story why they bought this land years. Because remember, they're buying this land on a dream years ago, right? And right. before they let it go, somebody has to hear the reason why, and that's us. So those are, imagine having that conversation, which could go some cases with some people that are later on in the years that could go for 45 minutes. Imagine having 10 or 20 of those a day. You don't have the bandwidth. You can't do it. So exactly. uh, you've got to build a system. So Especially uh, if it's a side hustle for you starting out. I mean, you're not going to have – you know, it's, it's different if you're uh, at home, but uh, the struggle is real. Barb Thibodeau, welcome. <laughs> and one more. Look at this guy still only mailing out of state owners. Uh, Scott, what about you? Then we're going to bring the guest in after this question. We we, we kept her waiting too long. Oh, I said I already gave so. away a little bit about who it is, but <laughs> I kept her waiting too long. So, uh, do you mail so out of state owners only? So, so Matt Forbes, I would say this: uh, if I find an area I like. Uh, I'm going to work that area, and I'll see what I can get. Uh, I have bought, I have bought land from in-state owners who owe back taxes. Uh, bought land from from in-state owners. So, um, stories with tears sometimes. 
You know he's referring That's to very true, Aaron. Yeah, yeah. It's emotional. People, uh, people's dreams have fizzled out, and the only thing left to remind them of that is what a tax bill. And then here yep. we come along, knights in shining armor, with an answer. Here's some yep. money. We'll take over that tax bill, and then we hand it off to somebody else with a dream. So, uh, and isn't it amazing, Mike? Like, I mean, some people get upset with you, right? But like, isn't it amazing not- how some people are so thankful they they send you thank you notes in the mail. They yeah. say, thank you so much for, for taking this piece of land off of my hands. I hope you enjoy it. Yeah, you know? Happy people on both sides, Scott. You're right. Yeah. You know, but they don't stay mad for long. I, I used to enjoy those really angry people because it's kind of a passion of mine to be able to convert them to, by the end of the call, whether or not I buy their land, they're happy. Uh, oh, because the, they're talking to you, dude. I mean, yeah, I, I guess. That, but that's I, I'm going to bring up our guest. Are you going to introduce her? Uh, should I bring her up, then introduce her? Or what do you want to do? How do you want to do this? I'll, I'll introduce her. So we're going to have a guest uh, tonight who is, uh, I think, finishing. She has finished up flight school. I think she was in uh, maybe the October group. I might be wrong on that. We can talk to her about that. But uh, she's down in Texas, actually, braving some uh, some violent weather this evening. They have some tornado warnings and watches down there in Texas, Louisiana, and whatnot. So uh, I think uh, she's getting prepared, but we're going to bring in Barb Thibodeau. Here she comes. Three, two, one. Uh, hey! Texas, actually, oh, now you're going to uh, shut off the Facebook. Some violent weather oh, yeah. This evening. They have some tornado warnings. I'm going to mute it for a second. You're going to shut the Facebook off, Barbara. That way we don't get the feedback. And then I'll unmute, unmute you. Give me the thumbs up when you're ready. I think she's ready. I'm going to leave her in the big screen there. There we go. I don't see Barbara. That's weird. But you don't see her? I see her. Yep. Okay. Well, I see her. Is anybody in the show? Aaron Williams? Do you see Barbara? I see Barbara. Facebook, Barbara. That way we I see Barbara's go. name. Did right. it work? Yes. We're here. We're live. We got you. Can you hear me, Barbara? Someone help us out. Can you guys see Barbara? I see Barbara. I see Scott. I feel like that show. What was that when we were kids? A lady with the... Had the uh, magnifying glass. Remember when you watch TV? Oh. Anybody remember that? Barbara, remember that? Yeah, Mike, she's on. She is I, on. I know she's on. I'm talking to her. There. Did she it work is. now? Yes, you're here. But now we can, can't hear you. There might be a delay uh, on her internet. Out. Can you guys see Barbara? I see hmm. Barbara. I see Scott. I feel like that show. Oh, I'm going to do a. I'm going to do a retake. I'm going to send her back down to the lobby for a second. Sorry, Bob. We're going to bring it back up. We're going to test it. We're going to see what's going on. It might be the internet over there. Um, Scott, you can see me now. I can see bad weather. I'm going to bring it back up now, Bob. We're going to try it. Maybe we'll we'll give it a a second run. Uh, Yep. Yes, KJ. She doesn't have doesn't have the robe. Right. We're going to be raffling robes off, though. Right. I don't think. Is that the way? Wow, there's a lot of feedback here. Yeah, I wonder if. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna go like this. Well, that's a bummer, huh? Yeah, I think it's. I think Barbara, double check that you don't have the Facebook running in the background somewhere. Maybe that's still up and running. Just do a double check on your computer screen, and we'll keep talking, and we'll try to bring you up. Could be the uh, could be the internet. Could be the tornadoes. Uh, right. Right, right. We'll bring you up in one more second. We'll okay, and we'll see what happens. We'll give it one more shot. What do you think, Scott? You know, we never claim to be technical experts, right? This is just we're <laughs> off the cuff. We're here answering questions about land. You know, uh, technical. Uh, Bailey and Bryce wants a robe. <laughs> uh huh. Are we gonna talk about how to get robes? Are you gonna bring? I thought we didn't talk about this yet. Am I uh... about how to get a? Well, we're having a. a... Ah, uh, okay. Twelfth show. The twelfth show. We're having a drawing for a robe. We talked about that. Was that supposed to be a secret? No, it was not a secret. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I'm, just, uh, oh, I'm, I'm trying try to bring... remember. I'm trying to remember back a few weeks. It's okay, difficult. Barbara, we're going to bring you up one more time and see how it works. Hopefully, I think it might be the tornado weather down there. We're going to give her one more shot here. Let's see if we can do it. Here we go. Okay. Testing. Better? Yeah, it's better. Scott, do you see her? I see her in here. Yes, yeah, actually, Barbara. You can hear me, Barbara, right? 
I wonder if there's a... Can you a, hear me now? I can hear you now, uh-huh. yes. Yeah, I can hear you. Sounds good. I don't know if she, you can... Can you hear us? Thumbs up. Uh, you know what it might be? You know, sometimes when you have a certain headpiece connected, when you come up to the uh, lobby, if you disconnect... It's, remember that, Scott? We were having trouble with that? Yeah. So, so Barbara, can you hear me? Because I heard you loud and clear. Hmm. Yeah, I don't. I don't hear or see her on my end. Oh, that's that stinks. All right, we'll talk for a second. And we'll see what happens. So, what's the uh, story too? But I heard you. Go ahead, speak, Barbara. We can hear you. Uh, Aaron Williams says, "Looks good. We can hear her too." So she's in. She's in there, Scott. She's live. So, Barbara, why don't you say a few words about yourself? How you started in the land business, and we'll see. I think we should Anything? be able to hear you fine. Yeah, it's good, but no. she can't hear us. All right, what I'm going to do is bring her back down. Unfortunately, we're going to have to we're going to have to hide her from the lobby. We're going to have to push send her back down, back down the lobby. Barbara, I'm sorry, it's technical. Dip. We could actually hear you, um, but you couldn't hear us. So I don't know what's going on with that. But we're going to actually uh, once you uh, we'll have her back on for sure. Yeah. We'll have it back on, but we'll see. You know, we're going to have to clear this up. We're going to have to bring – okay, so anybody out there, I've had a few people reach out to me. Any of those people out there with real technical skills, we're going to bring this <laughs> to the next level. So you're going to reach out to us. Uh, she's on. It sounds great. Thanks, Doug. Yeah, we heard her, but I don't think Barbara was able to hear us was the problem. So we weren't able to ask questions back and forth. Um, but but we'll, 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 we'll try it again in a minute maybe. What do you think? Uh, let's go to the questions that we had someone write in to us, right? We did, yeah. You want to bring that up and, and uh, discuss that a little bit? So let's we do, see. We do take write-in questions as well. And Barbara, we're going to try again in a minute. Don't don't get don't worry. You everybody heard you. You look great, but you couldn't hear us, so we had a hard time communicating. So we'll try it in a minute. We're going to go right now to a couple of questions that were sent in. Go ahead, Scott. So we had a write-in question, and uh, thought we'd address this. So so Mike, you ready? You ready for this one? This is a great mm-hmm. question. So be ready to answer it. You're going to be you're going to be a good one for answering this. Can you send it so, me so I can read it at the same time? I, there I did, but I'll, okay. I'll narrate it for the folks, okay? Okay. Let's so go. this is uh, – uh, let me see also. Uh, I, I'll say I'll tell you who it is here in a minute. She says, I know the steps, but I'm wondering how someone can quickly go from selling two parcels to selling multiple parcels a month or year to generate a steady income. I know they talk about posting domination, automation software, M&Ms, VAs, et cetera. But I also want to hear the logistics slash mindset behind the goal setting, planning, ac- action steps for setting up a <laughs> large land investing biz. Right now I'm working a lot in the biz and I want to change my mindset to oversee the biz with strategic planning. I have two VAs who complete tasks for me. However, I still complete a lot of tasks myself. Thanks and have a good weekend. Hmm. Okay. So um, let's take it right from the beginning. The first part, I know the steps, but I'm wondering how someone could quickly go from selling two parcels to selling multiple parcels and generate uh, steady income. So scaling the business sounds to be the first part of this question, right? So if we're right. talking about scaling the business, um, it's kind of linked into what we were saying in the beginning, right? You start out with a manageable amount of mailings on the on the one side. And what that does is it creates just a little bit of deal flow, right? What's huge in this business, everyone, is proof of concept. When you do your first deal and you get proof of concept, it's a very empowering moment. You've done a full cycle deal. You've went from the mailing component, which is the county research, through the due diligence, through the closing, through the marketing, the sales. You've hit a very high moment in the business, right? But then you need to be able to scale it from there. So how do we do that? Well, the good news about our business, everybody, is it's like Groundhog Day. It's it's boring it's repetitive it's redundant but that is awesome the reason being is that we're following the same process over and over again so you can quickly begin to identify which parts of the uh, process you don't have to spend all the time doing you can start to farm out those processes you know uh, they're, they're happening over and over and over again and the more you go through them uh, the better you get identifying which steps you can begin to pull out and typically people will pull them out from the beginning, right? You look at the pain points and the first pain point, if you want to scale this business, the first major pain point is going to be after you have massive mailings is dealing with that huge influx of intake. 
So whether it's an intake manager or a process, what do you think, Scott? We're talking, you know, going from a couple of deals and scaling it. What's the first major hurdle that you hit? Yeah, so the first, well, the first major hurdle also that uh, maybe you haven't really talk, touched upon yet is is having the cash flow to do that also, right? So using different strategies to propel your business forward in a way where you can continually purchase land, purchase more and more and more land, uh, make quick profit and purchase more and more and more land. And it does get easier and easier as you go, right? And there's different strategies for doing that. Right. So some, some people wholesale to generate a lot of cash quickly to purchase more land and scale it up that way. Uh, some people will, um, you know, uh, sell, sell a note or yeah, they'll, they'll sell, sell a plot of land on, a, on terms and then sell a note to keep, get cash in the business that way. So, so that's the other thing I think we have to think about as we go forward is, is generating that cash to sustain those systems and to advance those systems over time. And there are different strategies to do that. Right, right. That's and, and we learn those strategies in flight school. We learn those strategies in coaching. Uh, we touch upon those strategies in the mastermind group and that type of thing. So, Yeah, Scott has a whole class dedicated to the accounting, right? The concept of not running out of money, having like infinite funds or able to continue this process moving forward. Um, you know, and the reality is the market's going to say we're going to have predominantly more term sales. There's more people out there that can buy land at $100, $200, $300 a month, and there are people that can, uh, you know, dish out three, four, five, ten thousand dollars mm -hmm. $10,000 cash in a whack, right? So we're going to have more people on seller financing, but you're going to have that percentage. And, Scott, I think he mentions around 70, 30, you know, so 30% will be cash, 70% terms. And so the point is you're going to be able to refunnel, you know, repurpose that money back into the business. So, yeah, you do have to have a sound strategy so you don't <laughs> run out of the funds as you – building this process. So there's many ways that, um, many variables when it comes to scaling the business, right? But um, so Scott hit upon a great component. You gotta learn how to manage the funds and you gotta learn how to deal with the inflow of new properties. So, and, right. and that's really the best way to begin to scale the business is to keep mailing consistently because the more times you push yourself through this whole process, uh, front end to back end, the more you're going to recognize all the repeatable steps, the redundancy. Right. And then, you know, what Scott Todd talk, talk about the plates, right? Uh, yep. And we, you talk about the swivel, the right, swiveling, The swiveling from one. From... Bring that back up because that's a critical point that comes, it, it, it plays into what we're talking about. What is the swiveling and how does it connect to the land business? Well, all right. So the swiveling analogy is my attempt to, you know, come up with some type of analogy that might mean something to the community. Although it will never, it will never come close to Scott oh, Todd's spinning plates so analogy. Honest. Don't be so honest. <laughs> come on, don't be so, so honest. Oh, right, right, right. No, so I, I don't know. One of the shows I talked about how you got to swivel from one thing to the next, right? And initially you're by yourself swiveling in this chair. You're going from one thing to the next and mailing, due diligence, marketing, buying, selling. You're doing it all by yourself. But then, hey, you bring in a VA or two, or you bring in your teenage son, or you bring in an intake manager. I'm pretty soon you're all swiveling together in the chair, right? And right. like uh. you're kicking the next person in line, and they're kicking the next person in line, and you're just all a machine working together. And uh, I don't know. That's that's what it's. It, the interesting thing is this: like as time goes on, you're developing this machine that starts to run by itself, and you know you're doing the right thing. If you are acquiring more properties and selling more properties and making more money and spending, and so everything's going up that way, but your time in the business is going down the other way. Right, right. You know, so, this is great. This is great. What's, what's so yeah. funny, dude? The mass, I uh, know, the uh, round table, you, you missed the one the other day. I know you were working. Yeah, and we were talking about quotes, and they were bringing up your, you know, even uh, people with short legs take big steps. And then I forget who brought it up, but I think it was Eric Peterson, or maybe it was uh, Tate Litchfield. It's like, oh, we're even. No, Scott Todd said it. We're now we reached a point where people are quoting themselves. <laughs> <laughs> so when you said the robe and swivel, it's like once again, Eric Peterson, are you out there? Remember we were talking about this? It's like he said only Scott Bosman can quote himself, right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's so, awesome. So, no, the, the, the swivel is great. Scott Todd calls it the spinning plates. For those of you for 
um, you know, Bentfield Flight School, or those of you who go into flight school, each component of the business he calls like a spinning plate. And when I first heard him talking about this at one of the boot camps, I was like, what's he talking about? These spinning plates. But his mind works so like incredibly well and is so organized. It's basically every function of the business. There's five of them. There's the whole mailing component with the, uh, uh, you know, county research. That's spinning on its own. You get that kind of moving. And then from there, you go to the due diligence. And then from there, you move over to the how you're going to close and then how you're going to market. And then you, how you're going to sell. These five plates, right? And then I said, well, might as well quote myself here, right? Is you put the uh, them together, they become like gears. So one feeds the other. And you have this machine, like you said. And oh, here we go. Yeah, it was Scott Todd. God, we have confirmation here from uh, from Eric Peterson. How come it's not going up? My comments aren't even going up. Man, I'm going to have to hide our names. Maybe that's what's going on here. Let's try that again. No, it's not coming up. But Eric Peterson, we see it there. No, that was Scott Todd. Barbara Tibdo, I know. Sorry, guys. I have to try to get ahead. I, I apologize, Barbara. We, maybe we should have had a sound check with you before we came up, and I'll take full responsibility. But we will absolutely have you back on because we are definitely looking forward to hear your uh, stories and Martha, leave oh. leave a com leave a comment or two or I don't know if you want to share your tip of the week in the chat that's not as exciting but um but yeah leave but a I'm, comment or two that's that's pretty exciting yeah, that you, she said she yeah. put her first uh first plot of land on Land Moto this week so and she she messaged me the other day saying that she's to the point now where she's marketing this first plot of land so uh it's pretty exciting stuff right it's a little nerve wracking. Mm -hmm. It is, but the the uh, the cool thing is it, the cool thing is that the mailing component of our business is very similar to the marketing component. It's a volume game. In fact, as Mark Podolsky says, these are the only two things we really can control: how much we mail, how much we market, and then what's going to happen. You're going to have a whole bunch of people contact you on one side that want you to be buying their land, or they want to yell at you, or they want you to negotiate. But then you're going to have a whole bunch of people on the other side. That you know, that's the selling part, right? On the buying side, they're gonna have a whole bunch of people coming that way too. So you're generating just a lot of people. But when you really do that at high volume, you gotta have people in there. You gotta have systems, automation, delegation, and that's where we shine. I think one of the you know, there's there's two things about the way that we do our business that attracts people, even people who've done land investing and other platforms. One is our community, the fact that we yep. have such a really tight knit group of people doing the same model and how we work together. And the other is how we approach automation and delegation, and we pull ourselves out of the business unlike anybody else. It's truly phenomenal, and uh, I, I just think it's a kind of a special way that you know we do things. Would you agree, yeah, Scott? Yeah, for sure. I would totally so agree. Top, they say the comments are going up, so uh, that's great. So here's uh, Barbara's comment. I was so happy to share this week that, as you pointed out, finally put a land, uh, uh, put land on land motor. You know, even you know. Putting, a, you know, ads out there, putting, uh, you know, say putting something on eBay, there's things out there that can be challenging because you haven't done it yet and it gets you, am I doing this right? Am I, is this the right way to do this? Am I filling it out correctly? But you know what? As Scott Todd always says, done is better than perfect. I say, I might as well quote myself since so Scott did. I say, uh, shoot first, aim later. Well, Scott, I can quote myself too, right? Of course you can. <laughs> You may you may have short legs in one area, Barbara, but you can take big steps in that area. You're going to get there. Yeah, yeah. So we got a question from Roberto Chavez. Is that if it's up or not? But I'll read it, and then you could take a you could take a gander at it first. How's that, Scott? If you cannot find a parcel ID in the county GIS map, do you have guys have a go to website software service used to find property based on legal description? Hmm. So. Uh, First of all, if there's a county GIS map, Roberto, I would think you'd be able to find that parcel ID on there. But um, maybe there are different ways to make sure you check the filters on that GIS website because there's all sorts of filters on these sites where you can you can uh, you know have inlays and outlays of, of parcel numbers, legal descriptions. Um, what? Oh, look at that! Sorry. What's that? This is Miles, my cat. I don't know. He just wants to be an internet star, so he hopped on my lap. Now he's gone. <laughs> but, no, I, I think that was a great answer, Scott. But I'm also going to point out this. Those are people who get involved with coaching or we even have some access during the flight school, the Land Geek VAs. You give them the parcel ID. You give them the county. Wurla. Is that the right yeah. word? Wala. Wurla. I don't know how you say well, it. Wala. Wala. Kind of well, I well, can't. As long as there's no R's. You get everything you need, so um, you can't. We can't underestimate the value of that. That's incredible. That is such a critical component and part of your due diligence and part of your team 
and part of your automation is this Land Geek VA system. So I think oh, for that's sure. the, yeah, well, I mean, one of the one of the major pain points uh, for me a couple of years ago is due diligence. Not not that it's difficult. It's just you know, do I have two hours to to burn on my side hustle trying to do due diligence on these lots, right? And then um, you know, voila. Uh, voila, I find my own VA to do it. But then voila, Mark Podolsky uh, develops is that a silent his land. V. Is that a silent V? I think voila. it's a silent V. Yeah, I think so. It must be French. Um, I don't know. I don't know. But then we got the Land Geek VAs. I mean, you hand them a parcel uh, parcel number, and 24 hours later, you get all the info. It's pretty phenomenal. Can you see her question up on the – I know everybody else can. Can you see it on the screen, Scott, or do you have the – read hers. I like her question or her statement, Fabers. About uh, Craigslist and Facebook? Yes, please. Yeah, okay. So uh, Barbara said she's been marketing on Craigslist and Facebook, and she got some responses today. You just have to do it. And then uh, her – Book tip is Mel Robbins' five second rule. So it says it changed life. I love life. Mel Robbins, but yeah, it is. You know, uh, I don't want to give it away. Five, four, three, two, one. But it's it's a it is a great book. No, it is. You know, I find a lot of these books, like the twelve week year, we could summarize them in um, pretty much a little paragraph, right? But that wouldn't suffice to sell a book. So there's nine more chapters to kind of bring it about. But that is a phenomenal book on the five second rule, and that can absolutely cause massive change in your life because you begin to take action right away. Speaking of books, isn't there a book coming out soon for someone we know? Yeah, I think our, our good friend has a has a big debut coming out here. Rumor Pretty has exciting. it is the robe on the cover. Rumor has it. Dirt Rich with a big robe on the cover. Just kind of enveloping the book? Yes. <laughs> it comes and with its own cover? And I have a quote on the front page and you have your homemade quote on the back page. So Right, right, right. <laughs> I think your fly on the horse's tail quote should be on the back page, though, because that's... That got honorable mention, actually, on the last uh, roundtable, I just want to say. Well, of course it did. Oh, you we're we're, we're, awarding, we're yeah. awarding the quotes now. <laughs> <laughs> so, listen, um, any other questions out there? We have a lot of viewers on here. Let, you know, let's have some questions, because if not, Scott and I will have to come up with something. We have plenty of things to talk about. I mean, the land, but in fact, I know you had a few go-to topics if something didn't come up, but uh, let's see what the community can bring out for some comments. And uh, sure. maybe we can call out Scott Todd again. I like when we do that. So that was also mentioned on the round table. Oh, there's a lot. That round table was full of so much information, and they talked about the nightcap quite a bit. And, you know, overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly, the response was, it's phenomenal. It's, it's incredible. incredible. Yeah, it's awesome. Good. All and, right, and Kenny. I'm, here, I'll read this for you. Uh, Kenny J. Kaysen says, my parcels have not been selling as fast as I would like. I post on Facebook all the time, about 8 to 14 a day in different areas. I have sold five properties on terms. That's awesome. And I have all my money tied up in eight properties. I would like to buy more land, but I can't. Do you have any ideas? Mm, yeah. You know, something that's interesting that, uh, you know, there's numbers of ways, anytime a deal comes across your table, right, or your computer or your mail, there's money to be made, right? There's ideas out there. You can option off something, right? If you need to make quick cash, you can. And now this is, the option would be to buy the lowest end of the cash flow, right? You know, for a few hundred dollars, you could basically assign the agreement to someone and they could close on it and you get, you get a little bit of money. The other one is you could uh, partner with somebody. I know a lot of people that do that, you know, that basically find somebody else. And that's what's great about our community too. Such a close uh, knit group of people that you go to these boot camps, you develop a lot of trust with people. You develop a good connection. There's people out there that do have money that will assist and come in and partner with you. Right. So there's, there's people on just various, um, you know, various places in terms of money and, and, and what they have to invest and, and other people have more property. So you can always merge together. So Kenny, you know, I would look for any of that. I would never stop mailing because there's always a way to make money when something comes across your desk, whether or not you physically have money in your hand or not, right? You can partner, you can option or go so on and so forth. And as far as posting, yeah, that it takes, it takes um, a lot of, uh, advertising to sell a property. Now you might get a home run, right? You might put one out there and someone grabs it right up, just like you know, it might mail out and get a, a, a maybe like a 5% acceptance rate or a 10% on one mailing and then the other one might be two. But by and far, it just comes from consistency, right? Right. There's so, so many other ways to make money uh, that you never should stop mailing. 
And you know, if you're having if you're having problems, Kenny, uh, getting rid of, of parcels, you know, if I thirty days, I need to change something up. So I'm either gonna. Uh, are you pointing at me? I couldn't hear you for a second there. That was weird. That was a signal, so nobody else would know what I was talking about. It was very subtle. <laughs> can you hear me now? I can hear you loud and clear. All right, excellent. So clear. what I was saying, to, what I was saying to Kenny is, change it up a little bit. Change your pictures, change your marketing, change, you know, change the way you describe the property, change your down payment, uh, uh, give, a, give a special, no doc fee this week. Uh, you know, if it, the, the other thing is, Mike, when you first got into this, uh, or when people first get into this, and I, and I did it, I had a tendency to get attached to these properties. Uh, and, and, I, and I think to myself, I can't, I can't just double my money on this. This is a pristine piece of property. I need to, you know, triple, quadruple, quintuple my money on this. And then by the time I sell it, it's three months later, right? Yes. Where if I could have sold it in 30 days, you know, uh, double my money is pretty darn good on a piece of property, right? So try not to get attached. Maybe try to sell it for double instead of triple. It's or tough quadruple. because you compare yourself to all the stories you hear, right? We compare yourself to. We live in a different world than most other people that do their different types of investing, right? If you look at your average friend, you you know that just has a regular day job, and you say, "Yeah, I bought a property for a thousand dollars and sold for two thousand. I'm a little bummed out." They'd be like, "What?" You know, you just you, you what? Right? That return? It, it's we hear so many stories about the three, four, five, six hundred or more percent that kind of spoils us. And the fact that you can you know just double your money and be very happy if you need to. So um, yeah, and I. Let's go down. We've got two more questions here. Right? And one of them, Kevin Waymeyer, you have access to the Lanky phase. You're, you're in coaching, so you and I will Email. talk when this call's over. So I'll, I'll give you all the skinny on that. You're good to go. Because when you get part of the coaching program, you have unlimited VA due diligence. So you're good to go. I'll, I'll get up with you on that. What do you think of this? Do you season your notes before using? If you're going to sell a note, would you have it seasoned? Is that a good idea, Scott? What do you think? So, you know, you make sure they're paying already routinely. Is that a good idea, I guess, is the question? Um, I guess it, it depends on the feeling you get from the buyer, right? So, uh, you know, I think I think the more and more and more you talk to people on the phone, you can read these folks. So, I mean, I, I talked to a guy the other day. He's all about, uh, you know, moving out to the land ASAP, um, doesn't have a job right now, this, that, and the other thing. I mean – he sent me a processing fee, right? Um, but I'm going to make sure that, and I told him I'd hold the land for him for two weeks. It's non-refundable processing fee, but I'm going to make sure he pays, you know, once or twice maybe before I do that. Other people you get a better vibe from. So I think it, it kind of all depends. Yeah. You know, I mean, it wouldn't be a bad idea, right? Because I mean, there's things in place with the, uh, when you sell your note that if you want anybody's interested, just, you know, go to the TL folio site, but there's, there's some things in place that assist you say, say someone stock payment where you could, uh, then have time to recoup and resell it. So you could have your terms back up. So uh, it's nothing right. to really over concern yourself with, but seizing it a little bit, probably not a bad idea, but like the Scott said, having a, a feel for the buyer is definitely helpful as well. Uh, let's see. Just bought one. Barbara just bought a property from a LG vet. Excellent. Uh, technical issues tonight. Yeah, I know. That's more so on our side, Bob. Right? I, uh, I, uh, I apologize. Um, killing me to market her first property. There you go. Yeah. See, I don't know what it is. It's just like, uh, well, there's some, there's fear too, right? There, there are fear taking your first steps forward in anything. So. Um, yeah, you just can't be attached. Like you said, the, you know, listen, the thing about land is you can buy a ton of it. There's more right around. Any day you want yeah. more land, just go get some. So this is not something to be attached to. This is like, you know, you just make the deal and move on to the next one. Nobody is going to make their whole life on one deal, right? It's really going to be a process. So just keep going through that process. Yep, exactly. Wow. What do you think? I think. Other than huge technical difficulties, totally yeah. not only Barbara on our show, I think we did all right. <laughs> I think we did too. I, I was hoping she she was she was so excited we got to have her back on. She like, I feel bad, Barbara. She she uh, she works really early in the morning and she's off this week, so she. Uh, you know, it could be part of that. Could be that tornado. Could be the it could internet be the tornado. tornado. 
You know, she bought uh, four this week. She's rocking it. Barbara, you bought four properties this week. You're marketing properties now. Awesome. Market the other four tomorrow. Yeah. You know, you need, yeah, definitely. And anybody who's listening, when you're, you know, here's a little secret. When you're mailing out somewhere, already be marketing, even before you have the property. Pre-market it. The worst yeah. that's going to happen is you're going to tell them it's not available and put them on your buyer's list. And guess what? Most of our sales come from our buyer's list. So that's a good thing. So yeah. don't don't worry about that. And Andy, I love it. Keep the feet moving one day at a time. That was a show. Did you ever watch that show, One Day at a Time? Is that, is that the name of it? Uh, yeah, I think you I were like this. 20. I think you were like 20 then. I was like five. So I don't remember it well, but um, <laughs> I do remember uh, Schneider though. Remember Schneider? He kept his cigarettes rolled up in his white t-shirt. Yes, I do remember Schneider. See, you, you remember. I do. All right. Well, Barbara, no worries. Yeah. Do you have a sell your, sell your Ooh, buyers? That's a, that's a good one, Matt. Well, let's look. I have never, I don't know if you I have, Scott, but let's talk about, let's talk about Land Moto. You don't have to go buy a buyer's list. You just have to sign up for Land Moto, and you have access to thousands and thousands and thousands of buyers from Scott Todd. He's done it for you. So, in essence, I haven't, but uh, but uh, you know, uh, you have it available to you right now. So, all of you out there, that if you haven't gone over to Land Moto, and plus, there's, uh, there's so many functions on Land Moto. You know, from wholesale property to it's just an incredible site. So, uh, yeah, I don't sell my buyers list, but Scott Todd's a little crazy. He's got his right there for you. You just, you just, you just pay for a monthly fee, and you're in. You got his buyers list, which is huge. That you can't underestimate the power of a buyers list. It, it is by far the one of the, it is the top tool uh, in our business for selling land. For sure. If that doesn't pull Scott out from the, I mean, geez. yeah, we're, he's in the do woodwork you, tonight. You, do you he's, agree, Scott? All I want is a yes, just a yes. yes. <laughs> Eric would say yes. <laughs> Uh, Days of Our Lives. I did used to watch Days of Our Lives, uh, um, Andy, when I was little. I'd eat peanut butter and jelly and macaroni and cheese and listen yeah, to it. Yeah, it's on that Days of Our Lives. That was my mother watching it. But uh, yeah, you, but uh, good, good cover. Easy, easy, <laughs> easy. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, Thank you, Barbara. I guess we couldn't call out Scott Todd tonight, but uh, I'm sure he's listening. So, Scott, any parting words of wisdom from you? No, I'm, I'm excited to see a boot camp. We got, uh, what, we got one more. Well, we'll do land geek. We'll do nightcap next week. But the following week, uh, we might be at boot camp, right? We're going to do a show at boot camp. Oh, no, you just blew up our spot. I thought that was going to be a surprise. But maybe surprise. I, blew up your, I blew up your robe spot, so I'll, you can blow up my, my the other spot. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, yes. we'll, we'll figure something out for boot camp. I'm for those of you going to boot camp, we're thinking about doing a live nightcap show there. So we'll take some input on that. Even if you don't watch the live show, in the comments, please put down that uh, if you'd like to see us do a live show at the boot camp. Because, uh, yeah. yeah, the robes are coming for sure. Thanks well, for of that. course. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, make sure you guys, uh, anybody who's left a comment tonight or a question, you will be entered into a drawing. This is episode six, right, Mike? Wow. Uh, six episodes. Right? Like I said last week, that's more than most Netflix shows these days. So it's right. It's it's insane. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Did you Please get that Vegas call? From, live show. Did you get that call um, from Shark Tank? They want us to come on and present our show. Shark Tank. Why do they call you and not me? I don't understand. What is that? Oh no, no, I thought they called to both of us, but you didn't get the memo. No, oh, I didn't get the memo. Laurie, you didn't send him the memo. All right, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a drawing for another free coaching call, episode eight. That'll be in Vegas. Really? Live? We're gonna live? We're gonna draw live out of a hat for a free coaching call in Vegas. That's gonna be pretty sweet. And it is Good gonna stuff. be. Darn, it probably is gonna be during the uh, the uh, where is it? Uh, he just uh, open bar. It'll be op it'll be during the. Uh, It'll be during the uh, meet and greet, the what do we call it? the social hour, the social mixer that Mark always provides for everybody. He does such an awesome job. There's so many great parts about boot camp. I just you got to talk. I don't even know. I'll be honest right now. I don't even know if there's any slots open right now. So if you guys want to get in there, you got to email support, is a support or info at the Land Geek, uh, and you got to talk to Danielle. 
Danielle.com. You're going to talk to Danielle and see if you can squeeze your way in there because, uh, you know, this is one of our most popular locations. But, you know, maybe you can get in still because um, I would say uh, just email her right away because it's going to be phenomenal. I'm going to be there. Scott's going to be there. And if that's not enough, Mark's going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> and Scott and Tate and Eric. <laughs> and the more famous Scott will be there, yes. Yeah, yeah. So even though he didn't come out and show any love tonight, uh, we'll uh, we'll forgive him. But hey, Scott, uh, is it uh, your turn for the toast? No, I d- I toasted last week. <laughs> yeah, it's like I was just on the round table. I got another round table story. And at the very end, they said, "Okay, come to the point where Mike, where's your tip?" It was like, "What?" It wasn't even. It was like no, no preparation. <laughs> just threw it at me, and then Scott Todd thought I was going to be stumped. Like I wasn't going to be able to. Uh, what is it? But you know. I brought one up, and I don't want to give it away now because that comes out next week. Right. So, uh, awesome. Um, I w- uh, my toast is just going to be to you know all the new land uh-huh. investors out there. Oh uh-huh. wait, you- wait a minute. So now it's not my toast. <laughs> okay, rewind. Scott's toast. Go. Uh, no. Th- well, no, I don't want to spoil it either because it has to do with the round table. You already told. I- Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, we can't give too much away. They have to listen to the broadcast, right? Yeah, it's going to be a good roundtable next week. I'm excited. Eric Peterson in the house, still listening. I love it. And that's Eric, what he said. You, I can't. You've got to be sleepy. He's probably watching on his phone in bed or something. You know, sooner or later, I've already poked at him. He's going to be on this show. I know it's a little late. I know he's doing work, but we're going to get him on this show. And you guys are going to love him because he's super high strung, full of tons of energy. No, he's actually very, <laughs> he's very laid back and mellow. <laughs> I love that about him because he and I have totally opposite personalities. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Tyson, yeah, we can't wait to see you there as well. Uh, it's going to be awesome. Yeah, exciting. It's phenomenal. Yes. And so, I think uh, okay. Aaron Williams said Nightcap is been worthy. So that's that's good to hear from Aaron. I appreciate that. It's like a Netflix show. Yeah. All right. So my toast is going to be simply to all the people out there who are just getting started in the land business, right? And to embrace the suck, as Mark says, right? I know that what that means really is in the beginning, learning anything can be difficult. Listen, if, if you know, working out was easy, they'd everybody look like Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? I mean, I mean, I, whatever. Everything in life takes something of con- the consistency, the daily routines. And our daily routines is the M&Ms, the M- mailing, which, by the way, I did come up with that, M&Ms. I just want to throw it out there on live TV. The M&M's was something that I brought You came up, up with that? You didn't know that? I didn't know that you came up with that. I know. I know. Mark doesn't say that enough, so I figured I'd say it about myself. But anyway, M&M's. Right? M&M's. Mailing and marketing. That is what moves the business. So by tomorrow morning, listen, today is what day of the week? I never know. It's Wednesday. Yes, we still it is. have enough time. Get 100 mailings out. Get 50 mailings out. Get by Friday. Everybody that's listening to this show, get 50 more mailings out. I don't care if you did your 100, do 150. If you did zero, do 50. If you did 250, do 300. And you're going to you're gonna thank me. You're going to thank Scott when you bring those deals in and you make that extra money. So, And, if Kenny, if you don't have the money because you got, your money's tied up in deals, call up someone in the business that you know is in that community. They will partner with you. You can option it. You never have to worry about it. It's a great community we work with. Exactly right. Good deal. Good good toast, Mike. Cheers. Cheers. And by the way, what are you drinking tonight, Scott? Maker's Mark is my, my go-to. I have champ- champagne. That's how we say it in New England, champagne. You're drinking champagne? No, champagne. Champagne. Gotcha. <laughs> that's, true. that's true, Bob. The next is best deal around the world. Listen, I know the show's technically over, but it's like the afterthought. It's <laughs> like... I always tell people this business is like panning for gold. If you do it consistently, you're going to have flake after flake after flake. But every so often, you're going to get that nugget. And then you're going to get one or two nuggets a year. I'm telling you, this is the truth. If you mail consistently, you'll have have flakes all the time, but you'll have nuggets, one or two a year, that are going to make that year totally worth everything, all of your efforts. So stay consistent. And uh, hey, that's right. We should have it. Keep investing. Can we sign off like that? Keep investing. Keep investing. Sure, why not? No, I don't know if that's good. I want like you know, really good talk show guys have like a little sign off. All right. Well, we'll work on the sign off for uh, Vegas. 
we'll unveil the sign off at Vegas. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I All truly right. appreciate it. I'm going to, uh, oh. I'll see you later. <laughs> I'm in New England. Have a great night, guys. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>